interrupting your routine to have this conversation on the ice. Uh, so I think it's really important that we have this conversation as we're one of the teams in the league making history, not only on the ice, but in our locker room, in our office. So I think this is an important conversation that we have. So to start off, we have a question from where have you been? And Bring the mic closer. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so the first question here, and it's for all three of you, is what moments, actions, or events have been most affirming or empowering for you? To start off with Soroya. Like within the team? Mm -hmm. um, I think the most empowering thing for me um, has been seeing my teammates and coaches treat us as a family. Um, I think that we're all welcome in the dressing room. This is like really hard. <laughs> we're all welcome in the dressing room and um, our coaches make us feel comfortable and welcome. And questions are always willing to be answered by our teammates and we're all genuinely curious as to what we're doing outside of hockey, so. Angela? Well, for, for me, it's about um, getting back at a pro level for girls hockey and I feel that um, this team has brought so much to me and, and my family actually and uh, being a part of it is uh, pretty special right now and we've got a great, great great chemistry in the dress room and great chemistry with all the staff at T6 here and I look forward to uh, taking this uh, Tampa Florida and bringing home the Isabel Cup. Bucky. <laughs> what's, been, what's the most empowering thing for you? Oh, um, instead of just reiterating what they said, I think I'll just say having us three and Mark on the bench and just showing that, you know, people of color can play this sport. Uh, I think that's the most empowering thing to me. And yeah. Hello. All right. So we'll start in the middle here with uh, Angela, AJ. What do you think, um, sorry, what would you like to see the PHF and the PA do to promote and some more black excellence next season? Well, I, th I think right now we've, we're off to a pretty good start here. Um, I'd love to see um, diverse in every aspect of the game, whether it be players, coaches, uh, staff, officials. I, I still feel no matter what we do, and whether it's sport or life, there is still um, systemic racism. And I've, like I've always said, it's very hard to prove that somebody is keeping you down for the color of your skin. But I'm about the human race and what's great for the game. And I think that how we play the game, whether you're black, white, Asian, or polka dot, you have to be the best. And that's what we wanna bring here. Thank you, AJ. <laughs> Gonna ask you now, Michaela. <laughs> what would you like to see for next season? Um, personally, I would like to see more polka dot people. <laughs> I've never seen one before, but hey, they must be pretty cool if AJ knows them. <clears throat> I think we're on a good start here. I'd like to see more people of color and uh, in the game, honestly. It's really just me and Tinks here, so. I'd like to see more of us in the league as coaches and even refs. Over to you, Soroya. Yeah, I mean, all just 
thing. I think that the league, um, we can do a lot to not allow the burden to fall on our black and BIPOC players within the league. Um, and with that just comes educating ourselves um, as white individuals or whatever it may be. Um, but it shouldn't fall on the shoulders of black individuals to educate those around us. So I encourage people to get uncomfortable, ask uncomfortable questions, and, and yeah. Thank you. So this is for you, Michaela. How do you believe this experience with the Toronto Six is creating an opportunity, opportunity for the next gen generation? Um, my opportunity with the Six, I think, is very inspirational for younger girls. I've seen them at many of them here at the games and in my DMs just messaging me how um, of much of a role model I am and how much they love just seeing me out here and playing my best, and even Tink's out here. Um, and I just like seeing them around the rink, seeing them love us, seeing us love the team and everything, so. Thank you. So this question's for you, Angela. What does it mean for you to be a part of the Toronto Six joining a full coaching staff of people of color? Well, I think it's uh, important that we understand that the, the people that are coaching are qualified coaches, first of all. And we're not just there to tick off boxes. Um, but on the other hand, too, I, uh, I feel that you want to go with the best, and I feel that Mark and myself are the best, and it doesn't really matter about our color. I, uh, I grew up in an all-white family. Um, when I look in the mirror, I don't look at myself as um, black or white. I look at myself as a human being. And I think that if we all look at each other as human beings, and it doesn't really matter where we're from, what color of our skin, it'll only make this world a better place. And there we can s s stomp out racism and discrimination for the BIPOC community. But I think it's also important that we do sit here and have these conversation as much as people don't really want to constantly hear it i think it's important to us and people of color and other race that we continue to put ourselves out there that unfortunately it's our responsibility and um, the more we can do it the more people will recognize how good of hockey players, coaches, and people of BIPOC communities have, can have an, in sport, uh, sorry, an impact on our sport. That's, that was my serious side. <laughs> Thank you. This one's for you, Soroya. Can you speak about the impact of Soroya Strong on your girls and how the time and lessons you shared are making a mark on them presently and preparing them to chase their hopes and dreams the same way you've been able to? Yeah, well, I created Soroya Strong um, because I didn't have representation when I was younger in the game and I really wanted to be a role model for the other little black girls that play behind me. Um, we've got about 60 girls in our program now, and I think that just goes to show how many young black women actually love and want to play hockey. Um, and with our community, we want to make sure they're welcome in the sport. And through our community, they get to create friendships, networking, um, and, and, you know, just build that bond that I never really had. And I think that my career would have been a lot different. Um, and these girls come watch our games. They, uh, they come cheer me on. They call me. They FaceTime me, whatever it may be. Um, and I just think that it's very valuable to have a role model, a mentor, or whatever it may be. And that's why we've chosen to uh, proceed with Soroya Strong and, and get stronger as the days go on. 
Last question. <laughs> and this is, who is your role model for all three? Starting with... AJ. AJ. <laughs> Well, don't say Mark. You guys wouldn't probably know these girls, but my role model um, was a girl by the name of Laura Smith uh, back in the day, and my role model for uh, men's hockey because I love hockey um, was Mark Messi. Um, my role model um, and my biggest influence that I looked to in the game was AJ. <laughs> oh no, there was only one. There was only one black woman that I knew of. <laughs> That's cute. And now we have lots. Uh, my role model growing up would have to be uh, my dad and his brother. Even though they played ball hockey, that's who I looked up to all the time. Um, and then, of course, they talked about AJ all the time. Even though I wasn't able to watch her, everything they said made me want to be just like her. Go. Great. You know, That's I'm going to come way. over and give me a hug. <laughs> That's a great way to end this conversation. So once again, I want to thank you, Michaela, Angela, and Soroya, for taking time to have this conversation. And I hope that we're able to um, open everybody's minds in regards to what we're doing here and who we are at Toronto 6. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. Thanks, Christy. Thank you. Oh my God, can I start singing? <laughs> <laughs>